Yellow closes the book on season three of Tales from the Crypt with a display of cinematic glory. Directed by Robert Zemeckis, written by Jim Thomas, John Thomas, A.L. Katz, and Gilbert Adler, shot by Don Burgess, and music by Alan Silvestri, based on a story from Shock Suspense Stories number one. In a time before comic book adaptations were taken as seriously as they are today, Zemeckis and company show us how compelling the medium can be. It's 1918, the 49th day of a seemingly never-ending battle in France. Sergeant Ripper is desperately searching for Lieutenant Martin Calthrob in the middle of the battlefield, but every soldier he encounters has already perished. The sergeant finally finds his commanding officer, and some disagreements arise. We should climb the hill! You want us to stop? No, I do not want the managers stopped. The Huns have zeroed in, they're cutting us to ribbons. I want you to order the men to retreat. I can't do that. The general ordered us to take that hill. I am telling you to retreat. Now do it! Our orders are to take the goddamn hill. Damn the orders and damn the general! We're the ones being shot and killed! Come on, Sergeant! Fire the flare! Thank you, Sergeant. The men retreat. Captain Milligan speaks with General Calthrob as he studies the terrain map. Explosions sound off in the distance. The general explains the grim situation. The Germans have cut their phone lines and are trying to surround them. The lines have to be brought back up in order to call for reinforcements. The captain will get right on it. As he's about to leave, the general asks how his son, the lieutenant, is doing with his platoon. This is his first time seeing combat. Milligan breaks the bad news. The platoon is spreading rumors that their lieutenant is a coward. They are calling him Yellow. The general's orders are that his son must lead the squad to repair the phone lines. The sergeant and captain try to have a frank discussion with their general. General, with respect, I don't think it's a good idea to send your son on that mission. Why is that? He's a section lieutenant, isn't he? I realize that, sir. But, sergeant, tell him. Yes, sir. The lieutenant, as you know, is my superior officer, sorry. Get to the point, sergeant. Begging the general's pardon, sir. I don't know how to put Just this. spit it out, man. He's yellow, sir. Get him in here. The general sends for his son. The two have differing views about how to run things. Martin expresses he does not wish to be in the army anymore. He requests a discharge. His father refuses and assigns him his mission. Martin does not want to go into battle and still asks for a discharge. The general still refuses, but does agree to transfer his son off the front lines if he succeeds in this mission. The general convinces himself that everyone is wrong about his son. Martin and his men move out. They know things do not look good for them. Martin believes the break in the phone line is too close to the German side and tries to run, but not before Sergeant Ripper stops him. We gotta do this. You've got to do this. We need you. Listen, why don't you stay here? Guard the rear, sir. Let the men and me go fix the cable. Someone's got to cover us. Right. If you see any Huns, blow this. Ripper and the men go to fix the break as Martin covers them. The captain and the general await the repair. Martin sees the Germans approaching. They see him before he can alert his men. Shooting commences. You were supposed to order. Why didn't you blow the whistle? You were supposed to warn us. Martin flees. The lieutenant stumbles into his father's headquarters. They couldn't repair the phone lines. The entire squad is dead. Martin makes up a story of attempted heroics during the ambush. The general comforts his son when the captain storms in, carrying the wounded sergeant. Ripper accuses the lieutenant of abandoning his squad and calls him Yellow. Martin denies everything. He shot at the Germans to protect his men. Ripper dies on the floor. 
The general inspects his son's weapon. It was never fired. Martin is arrested and must face court-martial. Martin has nothing to say in his defense. He is found guilty. His own father grants his sentence, death by firing squad, to be carried out at sunrise. Without an ounce of remorse, the general watches his son cry and be carried away. But in the show, they exchange a few choice words. You're a disgrace to your uniform. I never wanted to wear it. You wanted me to. The other commanding officers try to console the general, as they know this must be difficult. But he continues business as usual. He won't have cowards in his company. The sun is coming up, the enemy is surrounding the base, and the firing squad comes for Martin. The general stops them. He would like to speak with his son privately for a moment. Things are much quieter in the show, as General Calthrop visits his son in the moments before sunrise. Martin expresses his hatred for his father, and his great fear of death. The general is not going to let his son die. He has a plan. There's always a blank in one of the rifles in the firing squad. Leaves the question of doubt as to who fired the fatal shots, and I am the one who loads the rifles. This time I'll load them all with blanks. When the squad fires, I want you to pretend you're dead. The division will be moving out almost immediately. I've already issued orders. Listen to me. I'll make up a pact for you. New identity card, some money, rations. I'll put it in the ditch where you fall. As soon as the company moves out, you take off. The firing squad's rifles will be loaded with blanks. When they fire, Martin is to play dead. The general will give orders for his men to pull out. Martin will be left behind, his chance to escape on his own. All he has to do is show some courage in front of the firing squad. The time has come. The general loads the rifles. Martin is confident he'll make it out alive. He gives a last request for a cigarette, and refuses to wear the blindfold. He smiles at his father, and shares some last words. I tried, but I'm not the man my father is. I'm sorry, and I apologize. My fear of dying got in the way of my responsibility to my men, and the obligations to my commanding officers. I know now what Shakespeare meant. Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. As the squad fires, the bullets tear through Martin's body, killing him instantly. In the show, he lives just long enough to realize what happened. The general knew his son would die an honorable death. Yellow was one of three stories filmed for the pilot of another series based on EC Comics, Two-Fisted Tales. I'll cover this pilot in more detail for a later video, but just look at the production value. The sweeping war shots, the all-star cast, and awards-nominated makeup. No expense was spared for this intended series launch. Robert Zemeckis and his eventual cinematographer and composer collaborators for Forrest Gump craft a tale that goes beyond the demand for TV. This was seven years before Saving Private Ryan changed war movies, but much like when I recently re-watched Paths of Glory, I was struck by how powerful these battle sequences were. Speaking of Paths of Glory, there are shots taken right out of the Kubrick film, and the episode shares its star in screen legend Kirk Douglas, who gives an Emmy-nominated performance. Kirk Douglas was the French colonel defending soldiers accused of cowardice in the movie, and here his role is reversed, as the general sentencing his own son. The chemistry between the general and Martin is all the stronger as Eric Douglas, Kirk's real-life son, plays the accused. Aside from some name changes and changing the colonel into a general, the show is extremely accurate to the comic, and even adds the unseen battles. This was the last episode to air before the death of EC Comics publisher and co-creator of Tales from the Crypt, William M. Gaines. I hope he got to see the full potential of this shock story realized on screen. Ah!